Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at the Common Sense MD coming to you with a weekly podcast. Today I want to talk about something that's controversial um, somewhat and something that patients ask me all the time about an alternative treatment for cancers. As you know, we've made tremendous strides in treating heart disease. Cancers, not as much. Um, so um, one thing I will tell you, we're going to talk about fenbendazole, uh, otherwise known as fenben. It's a treatment that um, a lot of people are looking at um, for many different types of cancer, in addition to uh, the traditional types. Now, I want to disclose that this is not medical advice that I'm giving through this podcast. It's medical information. You get medical advice when you come into my office or you see your own doctor. So um, when it comes to cancer treatments, you know, you want to do everything you can to cure the cancer. Um, and obviously, I'm all for traditional treatments of cancers, whether it be surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Um, but there's also additional treatments that may be helpful for you because I've seen it. I've seen it in my practice. I've read about it. I've researched it. And I think if you use a combination uh, approach, certainly unless you have something very straightforward that's easily curable, say like by surgery, then you should look into it at least, especially if you've been giving a poor prognosis and uh, or you know they say nothing is going to work, then you ought to pull out all the stops, in my opinion. And again, we, we're talking about maybe cancer prevention as well. I think it's we're very close to getting genetic testing that can predict what type of cancer that you may be very vulnerable to. As a matter of fact, they're out there already. They're not covered by insurance, um, but they're available. So we'll be talking about more of those later on. Um, in future podcasts. But in any event, so let's talk about fenbendazole, um, a close relative of mubendazole, which we use to treat pinworms in kids. The thing about mubendazole, um, the human medicine, or at least human form of it, um, it's very expensive. So what's usually used in these cases are fenbendazole, which you may know as a dog dewormer. It's kind of hilarious, but it is a dog dewormer, but you can get it over the counter. Uh, it's very inexpensive, and uh, there's a lot of people that use it and get great results from it. Um, this drug's been around since 1974. It's used worldwide. Like I said, it's over the counter. It's inexpensive. Um, it definitely um, kills parasites, but it's also... Um, people think that it's very effective as an anti-cancer agent. And I have seen it used in patients uh, with good results uh, with virtually no side effects. And remember, there's no medicine in the world that doesn't possibly have a side effect. Uh, but this one's really, really low. But it's, it's really been shown to be effective in causing regression of various tumor types. Um, also used in combination with other traditional approaches like chemotherapy and radiation, it won't interfere with them. Um, so you're talking about a repurposed drug. You know, in the last three years, we've talked a lot about repurposed drugs that have worked um, as a complementary anti-cancer medication. Um, it really appears to work in a very similar fashion to a lot of the chemotherapeutic drugs without the side effects or toxicity. Um, however, like anything repurposed drugs, there's not a ton of human um, experiments with it. Um, there have been, but there's nobody that's going to, because it's over the counter, it's cheap. There's there's no big pharma company that's going to carry out double blind placebo controlled trials on this thing. Uh, so, and you know, plus you may not have the time to to have one of those run if you're dealing with cancer. Um, now, these are pills that you can get over the counter. You can order them. Um, it has limited absorption in the gut, so you have to take them with food. As a matter of fact, some people just take the capsule and sprinkle it over their food and eat it uh, that way. 
So the bioavailability of this is definitely increased by eating food with it. Um, under 5% of people will get a little stomach discomfort from it um, if you took a higher dose of it, like maybe a little loose stools. Now, people with severe liver or kidney problems, you have to, you know, they have lower excretion rates of any drug, so you have to watch their liver function test, and that's easy to do. Um, so you watch that, and if, if it does, I haven't seen it do that, but if it does, you just stop it, and it reverses within a couple of weeks. Um, the protocol um, it can be varied. Um, most people have heard of this guy named Joe Tippins, who really got the ball rolling with fenbendazole. Um, he was a guy who had metastatic small cell cancer of the lung and was told there was nothing they could do, just go ahead and die. But he was talking with a veterinarian friend of his and who had seen this work in some animals for cancer. So he tried it and... You know, he's still cancer-free. I think this was back in 2017 that he took the medicine, and he's still cancer-free. Um, so with no evidence of any recurrences. So the original protocol was to take this for three days and take four days off. Um, and th that didn't cause any problems um, for prolonged use. Of, I mean, you can use this thing indefinitely, really, because you don't develop a tolerance to it. Um, it's suggested that you do take some other things with it to increase the effectiveness of it. Milk thistles, one, curcumin's one, CBD drops are another. Um, they seem to have concurrent effects with the fin bin if you take them that way. Um, how does this stuff work? That's really interesting. You really get into a lot of chemistry with this, but it really works. It really cures the parasites by selectively blocking the synthesis of microtubules. Uh, microtubules are part of the, the structure of a cell that allows patches of things to get into the cell to do their work, including chromosomes, including cancer. Um, really, cancer is a disease of mitosis. Mitosis is replication. And as you know, cancer cells just keep dividing and dividing and dividing very rapidly. Um, so what this does, it, it blocks these tubules selectively and stops mitosis or cell division. Um, kind of like Taxol and Vincristine do that are chemotherapeutic drugs. Um, so they found out that that's the way it, it kills the parasites, but also exhibits a similar effect um, against cancer cells. Um, so there's three, turns out there's three main mechanisms that uh, FinBen works. And one is by the induction of apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And it works by cell cycle arrest, just like we were talking about through these inhibition of these microtubules. Um, the second way it works is inhibition of glucose uptake in cancer cells. Malignant cells are known to have an enormous glucose uptake. That's why I tell everybody that has cancer, there's a couple of things I would immediately do. One, I would go on a ketogenic diet. The second one, I think about getting some high doses of IV vitamin C. Um, personally. But cancer cells consume glucose 200 times faster than ordinary cells. If you heard the Warburg effect, if you study cancer, that's the uh, aerobic glycolysis effect. Um, this can be seen on PET scans. It's pretty obvious. So fenbendazole limits cancer cell fueling with sugar by limiting this glucose uptake. Uh, decreasing the amount of what's called glute transporters, which are canals that take the glucose into cancer cells from the blood, like we've talked about. Uh, an enzyme called hexokinase 2 is inhibited as well. Very important. Um, it helps those tumors to not divide rapidly and prevent sugar from getting in there. The other thing it does is reactivation of something called a P53 gene. Um, this gene is the strongest tumor suppressor in our bodies. We don't have a lot of it, but it really reactivates this P53 
53 gene that really helps decrease uh, spread of cancer. Um, the thing about it that's, that's unique, too, is that cancer cells don't develop resistance to fembendazole like they can chemotherapeutic drugs. Um, that means that it can be taken constantly and remain effective. Um, one of the main mechanisms of chemo resistance in cancer cells is the adaptation of excretion of these anti-cancer drugs to the outside uh, via special drug efflux pumps called P-glycoproteins. I know I'm getting deep in the woods here, but bear with me. So fembendazole is not a target for these P-glycoproteins, so it cannot be excreted um, out of the cancer cells. So it's going to stay there. It's going to fight the cancer cells. Now, dosages. Again, um, this is there are several ways you can do it, but for active cancer, you're going to need a dose of 444 milligrams daily. Now, sometimes some people recommend you take one day off a week. I think I would just take Sundays off. Um, you're probably going to forget about it. Kind of like vitamins. I recommend you take your vitamins six days a week. Um, but again, you're not supposed to develop tolerance to this. But like anything, I think it's probably a, a good idea. So taking it for active cancer and cancer relapse prevention, you want to take it daily. You want to also take your curumin, milk thistle, and CBD. Uh, you want to check an occasional liver function test, which is dirt cheap, easy to do in the office of any doctor. Now, it may take one to four months uh, for the therapy to begin showing results. Uh, the treatment, again, can be combined with the majority of chemotherapeutic drugs, radiation, or surgery. Um, you need to follow the regimen even if the cancer has significantly regressed because tumors tend to recur uh, quickly if they're not treated, especially the more malignant and uh, the tougher ones. But there's no reason to discontinue treatment. Um, again, it should be taken with food. Um, side effects are very uncommon. Uh, again, if you took excessive amounts of this stuff, you could have a little diarrhea. Um, so you really don't need pauses um, unless your liver enzymes go up. If they do, you take a two-week break from it. Um, it's thought that fembendazole could also... Um, sensitize these tumors to radiation therapy, making it more effective. Um, so this Joe Tippin worked on several different protocols. He's a pretty smart guy. He's not a doctor. But anyway, um, there's a lot of smart people that aren't doctors, believe me. Smarter, probably. But um, you can prevent this cancer relapse by continuing to take the medicine. Um, but that you probably only need to take a 222 milligrams of this and that and repeat the cycle weekly now other people will take this especially those that have had genetic tests that know they're really prone to getting cancer they'll take the 222 milligram tablets and they'll take a capsule three times a week four days off they'll do this for 10 weeks and then 10, take 10 weeks off and that and continue that regimen indefinitely so that's that's one way they do it you know you can read about joe tippin's uh success story you can read a lot about it if you if you google this thing or do your own research you can see a lot of success stories with it and again um i'm not really um actively telling you to go do this if you have cancer but i'm just giving you information because uh, a lot of people ask me about fembendazole um so look at it you know obviously follow your doctors and your oncologist directions and this may be a, an additional treatment you could consider uh for your cancer there's another one that i'll just briefly mention that i would probably take too uh called artemisinin uh otherwise known as sweet wormwood. This has been used in Chinese medicines for centuries. Uh, it fights malaria, fevers, and inflammation. And it's cheap. It's non-toxic. Um, you don't develop resistance to it either. And it's, it's kind of just so well tolerated that you, you really 
don't have side effects from it. Um, so anyway, um, it works in a little different way than FinBen does. Cancer cells rely on iron to spread. And when iron and artemisinin uh, enter a cancer cell together, what happens is they form atoms called free radicals that kill cancer cells without harming the normal cells. Um, as a general principle, it's about 400 to 800 milligrams uh, a, a day for this. Um, and you can take this for at least 6 to 12 months um, with minimal adverse effects. Again, long-term use, I don't know about this. Um, past 12 months, not sure about it. But um, so look at look at these things. If you are a friend or a loved one has cancer and they've been given a bad prognosis, um, you know, they might want to consider this. Again, I'm not telling you to go do this. I'm not necessarily advocating for it, but just giving you information. So I did test it out and I ordered some of this stuff just to see if I could get it in and how expensive it was. And I came right in the mail. Finbin and liposomal artemisinin. Easy to get, over-the-counter. Um, again, there's protocols that are available, um, but see your doctor first and certainly um, do the traditional route with your chemo and radiation or surgery if it's what's recommended by your oncologist. Your oncologist may or may not know much about these alternative treatments, probably not, but again, this is your body. And I don't see any harm in trying this in addition to the other treatments. So I hope this helps with information on Finbin and artemisinin. Um, I hope to see you soon. It's Dr. Rogers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.